I am so excited to be doing this video on melodrama. This makes me so happy. I can't wait to get to it. But first, I gotta dial things down a bit. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer and welcome to my writing channel. As I mentioned in that horribly degrading intro, I'm gonna be talking about melodrama today. And melodrama, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's basically any time you have heavy emotion in your story that is over the top, it's unwarranted, the characters didn't earn it. Anytime you have just any kind of emotion that just overdoes it, chances are, you have melodrama in your story. And sometimes, believe it or not, this can be okay. A lot of people say, oh, you should never have melodrama, but there are times that it's more acceptable than others and certain audiences are more forgiving with it, depending on what genre you're writing in. But when it comes to melodrama, there are two common types of it. Usually you'll see it in dialogue and you will also see it in narration. When it comes to dialogue, it's basically like what I did in the intro when you have characters who are stating their feelings right on the nose. I love you so much. I hate you so much. You piss me off, blah, blah, blah. And you know, sometimes when we have like legitimate arguments, we say these things, or when we have like an intimate moment, we say these things. But uh, typically if you're having conversations where people are telling each other how they feel exactly, you're, you're stepping into melodramatic territory there, so it's something to be aware of. Now, when it comes to melodramatic narration, it's a little more complicated there, and uh, narration could be melodramatic for a lot of different reasons. For instance, if you're labeling emotions in a character's narration, she felt so sad, he was so angry, you know, and so on and so on. All those, anytime you're labeling emotions, telling the audience how to feel, you're robbing your readers of a chance to feel those emotions themselves. You should be showing how the characters feel so that the audiences can connect with it and can feel that emotion themselves. Another problem with, with melodramatic narration is when you have uh, cliched, predictable reactions to a situation. For instance, if you establish that a character is sad and then you show them crying, that's predictable. If you establish that a character is angry and then you show them fuming and you know throwing punches and storming off or whatever it is that's predictable as well anytime you have like a certain emotion established think about how you want to show your character's reaction think about how your character is different from the average person when it comes to reacting in a certain way maybe when they're sad for instance instead of you know sobbing or something like that maybe they they actually smile or maybe they just kind of shrug it off and pretend it doesn't matter at all or you know, maybe they just go silent or something like that. Try and do things other than the most predictable ones out there. And then another type of melodramatic narration is whenever you have like excessive poetic bullshit. His soul was crushed to the core. His spirit was completely torn asunder. His, his heart burst like a volcano in his chest. And you know, it's bursting over the fact that he's gonna eat pizza for dinner tonight or something like that. I mean, you shouldn't be reacting like that over like common occurrences and everyday things, you know. Save the poetic language for the bigger moments. Don't just throw them out there every chance you get. Now how about an example of some melodramatic narration? Here's a paragraph that illustrates it. Bobby opened the envelope and saw it was a rejection letter. The printed words made him sad, so sad, sad as he'd ever been. Wiping his tear-soaked eyes, he began to sob as his soul crumbled within his lifeless body. Harvard didn't want him. He feared that no one else did either. So there's about 5,000 different things wrong with that paragraph, but let's just focus on the worst of them. I think the opening sentence is okay. It's just describing the action of him opening the envelope, seeing the letter. That's okay. But beyond that, it's just a complete disaster. So the first part here, the printed words made him sad. Obviously, you have that word sad there. You're labeling the emotion. You're telling the audience how to feel. That's not the best way of doing it. Sometimes you can get away with this, but if you do label the emotion, don't repeatedly do it. Don't follow it up with sad, sad, sad like you do in this example here. So sad, sad as he's ever been. That's not really getting the message across to the audience. It's just basically telling them, hey, you're supposed to feel sad for this guy, even though you don't really feel anything for him. Then the sentence after that, wiping his tear-soaked eyes, he began to sob. That's, you know, generic, cliched reactions. You're sad, you start crying. You're sad, you know, maybe you double down and you sob on top of it. I mean, that's just, we've seen it a million times. It doesn't really evoke a response from the audience. It's just so done to death. 
and then you follow it up with some poetic bullshit as his soul crumbled within his lifeless body. That's just so over the top and ridiculous. I mean, come on, Bob, get it together. And then you, you finish it off with Harvard didn't want him, woe is me, and it's so over the top, it tries too hard, really, the whole paragraph tries too hard, and if you're writing something like this, take a step back, ask yourself, how can I show rather than tell? How can I come up with some, some fresher ideas as far as the reactions? And how can I, you know, realistically portray this character for who he is? So now that I gave you a terrible paragraph, I'm gonna try and make up for it with a better one that has less melodrama. Bobby opened the envelope and saw it was a rejection letter. It didn't surprise him, not one bit. But seeing the words, we regret to inform you beneath the Harvard letterhead left him feeling numb. Now he could only wonder what the other schools thought of his application. So this paragraph is much better because it's much less melodramatic. Obviously it has the same opening sentence, but beyond there, it goes a lot smoother. For instance, we have, it didn't surprise him, not one bit. Instead of telling us that he's sad, we get this sense of who he is as a character. We see maybe he's not the most confident person, or you know maybe he was on his guard because he was expecting the worst, or maybe he's just realistic. He didn't think he would get into Harvard. And then we follow it up with a sentence that paints an image in the reader's head and draws connection to it. And what I'm talking about there is that, but seeing the words, we regret to inform you beneath the Harvard letterhead. Any reader out there has probably received a letter at some point in their life that started with, we regret to inform you. And as soon as they saw those words on paper, it was a sad thing for them. It was something that, you know, affected them in a negative way. So it's something that they can connect with the character with, as opposed to being told, oh, he's sad and he's crying, he's this and he's that. We get an image here, we get something that's relatable, something that we can latch on to. And then uh, this sentence ends with, uh, it left him feeling numb. Numb is, is, it's a feeling, it's a sensation. It's not the most cliched one, although it has been done before. Still, it's better than, you know, sobbing and tear-soaked eyes and all that. That numbness is also a little ambiguous, you know. We're not entirely sure if he's devastated or if he's, you know, just a little off-put by it but we get the sense that, yeah, he doesn't feel good about this. And then the final sentence, now he could only wonder what the other schools thought of his application. Instead of the woe is me, over the top, you know, Harvard didn't want him, no one else did either, boo hoo hoo. Instead of that, we get the sense that his, his mind is racing, he's, he's worried about what other schools think of his application, am I going to get into college, what's going to happen to me, and so on. So I hope the example helped, and now that I spent the past few minutes just shitting all over the idea of melodrama, I want to tell you about balancing the emotions in your story, because sometimes it is okay to have melodrama in your story. And sometimes, even if you have a heavy emotional moment that isn't melodrama, you will still have people telling you, oh, this is melodramatic, this is just over the top, you should just cut this all together. There will always be people who see any type of emotional expression in a story as melodramatic, as over the top, as something that makes them uncomfortable, and you just have to accept that. I think the key thing to remember is that when you are writing a story, you need to balance out the level of emotion going on in there. And I think when you're going through your story, you don't want heavy emotion in every single scene. You don't want a sad scene here and then follow it up with an angry scene and then follow it up with like 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 an intense you know screaming match and then you follow it up with 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 their jubilant and happy and like the emotions are off the charts er everywhere you look you want to also have scenes where characters take action, they have thoughts, they come up with plans, they do things other than just get into heavy emotional conflicts with one another. Because if you overdo it on the emotion, your readers are going to get burnt out on it. There's only so long they can be just exposed to emotional scene after emotional scene. You have to space things out, you have to pick your battles, and you have to find the right moments to convey that emotion. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, be honest. How much melodrama is there in your current work in progress? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend if you don't mind. And as always, remember to keep on writing.